This is the OTB Television Network. Welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. Today uh, we'll be wrapping up some of the summer stakes action for you. The Labor Day holiday, kind of known as the uh, official end to the summer racing season. We uh, did complete the Saratoga meet as well as the Monmouth Park summer meet this past week. So we'll be showing you highlights from those two racetracks end of meeting stakes series. Del Mar will be completing its stakes series on Wednesday, September 8th. Uh, they are running the uh, Del Mar Futurity on that day. Following that, they will be transferring to the fair circuit for a little while before the opening of Santa Anita in the fall. We are going to get today's program kicked off with the Sussex Stakes from Delaware Park. This is a $100,000 event for three-year-olds and up. They're going a mile and an eighth on the turf course. Let's start with Monday's Sussex Stakes from Delaware Park. And they're off in the Sussex Handicap. Private Slip gets away well toward the inside. Warren in between horses. Mr. Routine and Grape Shot up on the outside as they race down that chute. Private Slip getting out just a bit there with Warren right alongside, challenging for that early lead. Mr. Routine settles nicely in the third. Grape Shot on the outside, fourth. And two lengths further back to Majestic Jove, John's Call. And Cynic Spewer is the trailer as they come by the finish line the first time. Private Slip showing the way quarter and 24 and three by a length. Warren racing second toward the inside, Mr. Routine in a good spot in third, with Grape Shot under a snug hold in fourth. Majestic Joe hands the rail, John's call next in line, and Cynic Spewer is about six lengths off the lead, set by Private Slip as they race around that turn. Mr. Routine toward the inside, second with Warren third. Majestic Joe continues to save ground nicely. Grape Shot moves up between horses. Length and half further back to John's call and Cynic Spewer. Half goes in 49 and three, moderate tempo as they move down the Delaware backstretch. Private Slip leads at Mr. Routine. Moving up on the inside of Warren. Grape Shot is racing in fourth, followed by Majestic Jove. Then comes John's Call Your Favorite is about six lengths away, and Cynic Spewer moves up on the inside. They've got a half mile to go. Private Slip still on the front end with Warren challenging now second. Mr. Routine is a close-up third. Let them have to Grape Shot has to do more now in fourth, followed by John's Call Cynic Spewer, and Majestic Jove is at the back. Three-eighths remains on the front end. It's still Private Slip being challenged now by Warren. Two lengths to Mr. Routine. Grape Shot is on the move, as is John's call up on the outside. The six went in 12 and two as they turn for home. Private Slip is hanging in there. Gamely still leads it by a length with Warren. Here comes Grape Shot and John's call. Grape Shot between horses. John's call on the outside. Looks like these two may fight it out. Private Slip is hanging in there. Gamely, as is Warren. It's Grape Shot and John's call head to head, nose to nose. John's call and Grape Shot. It's going to be a tight one. Almost inseparable might have been John's call on the outside over Grape Shot. It's a tight photo. Getting the day started with a uh, disqualification, a little bit of a uh, disappointing note there, but uh, John's call, as you saw in the stretch, did come in a little bit late on uh, Grape Shot during the stretch. Both horses fanned wide around the turn. Uh, there was some bumping incidents there in the stretch causing the disqualification of John's call, putting Grape Shot into the winner circle. This is a horse that's been doing very well down on the mid-Atlantic circuit on the turf, uh, middle distance type races, running uh, very well in good stakes company throughout this season. Finishing second, or finishing under the wire in the first spot, but getting disqualified into second, actually. John's call, a horse that we've seen running here a number of times in Saratoga, a real horse for course up here, running a very sharp race down at Delaware Park as well. In the third spot, Warrant, who did uh, stalk the early pace, made a bit of a bid, but uh, did weaken late in the going. The winner, Grape Shot. A five-year-old bay horse. He was bred in Kentucky, sired by Hermitage. He is owned by the Silhouette Stable and trained by Ann Merriman. Getting the win under rider Juan Umana in a time of 1 minute 49 and 4 fifth seconds. Next, we're going to head up to Monmouth Park, where the closing feature of the Monmouth Park summer season was the Miss Woodford Stakes. This is a $70,000 purse for three-year-old fillies going six furlongs on the main track. Let's head down to Monmouth Park for the call of the Miss Woodford Stakes. Racing in the Miss Woodford Stakes. Appealing filly came out last. 
It's Paula's girl to the front. Wing delight, and there goes Riley's heat on the inside. Betty Starr is out running in fourth, just in behind them, followed by Legalian Paparica, then appealing Philly on the inside, and she's seven off the lead early on. She's being tracked by Super Duper Miss Lady Cruella, and T Storm is last by the quarter in 21 and two fifth seconds. Riley's heat. Runs a pressured quarter with Wing Delight right to the outside and Paula's girl pressing free wide. Betty Starr is running fourth, Paparica to the outside. Legalia is in sixth position and now Riley's Heat has dropped out of it. Paula's girl has taken the lead. Paparica to the outside. Betty Starr is right there. And here comes Super Duper Miss winding it up three wide around Wing Delight and Legalia. 44 and four for the half and they're into the stretch. And on the inside, it's Paula's girl. Papa Rika to the outside, running a big one. She's taken the lead. From the back of the pack, Legalia trying to come on with Betty Starr and Super Duper Miss. The Jersey bred Papa Rika in front. Here comes Legalia. Here comes Super Duper Miss. But Papa Rika holds on. Papa Rika, another filly that we've seen do very well here in New York, getting a stakes win down in uh, New Jersey under rider Dean Butler. In a uh, very impressive fashion by half a length, but she was uh, she was a very game winner down there. Running second, Legalia. This is a filly that had run very competitively in Allowance Company in New York at uh, Saratoga or in her prior effort, running a very nice second place here also, uh, running up into Stakes Company, I believe, for the first time in her career, finishing third, super duper miss coming from way off the pace, far outrun early. She made uh, quite a bit of ground up on the turn to get into the show spot. The winner, Papa Rica, a three-year-old Bay Philly by Papa Riccio. She was bred in New Jersey. She's owned by the Monkey Key Stables and trained by Charles Harvat. Ridden to victory by, by rider Dean Butler, completing the six furlongs in one minute, nine and four fifths seconds. Next, we're going to stay in New Jersey, but we're going to change racetracks. We're going to the opening night feature at the Meadowlands, the Honey Bee Stakes, a grade three event. $150,000 purse. It's for three-year-old fillies. They're going a mile and a sixteenth on the main track. Let's head down to the Meadowlands for the call of the Honey Bee. And they're off. Golden Temper toward the inside away quickly. And the great filly runaway Venus has early speed. Not so clever is gaining. And there goes Bank Lady Jane. To the clubhouse turn, Bank Lady Jane with the black cap to the front. Not so clever on the outside in second. Runaway Venus is third. The gray is moving up between horses. Then Piccolil is next at the rail. Golden Temper saves some ground. As they race to the back stretch, Bag Lady Jane leads it by two. Not so clever, second by a half. Runaway Venus on the outside is third a half. At the rail in the yellow colors, Golden Temper is fourth. Then comes Piccolil is fifth on the outside. Dutzi is sixth. Stablemate Wittenberg is seventh on the inside. Boomtown Girl is racing eighth and then a quick gap of about six lengths. Back to the three trailers. Belle Cherie on the outside. What if from between horses and at the rail Gaelic Bay is 11th and last. 45 and three for the half. They're on the turn. And back Lady Jane leads it by a half. Wittenberg. Now with a quick burst to speed up to challenge, Runaway Venus is a close-up third. Here comes Boomtown Girl. Fourth on the outside is Belle Cherie. Looks for some racing room and finds it on the inside. Four of them across the track at the top of the lane. And Belle Cherie comes away with the lead. On the outside, Boomtown Girl to challenge. Gaelic Bay from the back of the pack. Down the stretch they come in the honeybee. Digging in on the front end, Belle Cherie. Here comes Gaelic Bay. Belle Cherie, now here's a little bit of a turnaround. Last year, she was regarded as one of the better two-year-old fillies on the dirt for trainer Phil Johnson. Getting her first win of her three-year-old season when switched back onto the main track, taking on grade three stakes company for, uh, for the first time on the main track at that level and uh, running a very game race from far back early made a uh, a very solid bid here. It was described in the charts as an eye-catching bid along the rail under Jose Velez. Held on gamely to the lead to win by a head over Gaelic Bay. Another filly that made her uh, 
all of her best running late in the going, had no early speed, but uh, closed a lot of ground, made a last to second move. In the third spot was Boomtown Girl, a filly that's done well down in the uh, in the New Jersey circuit. And, uh, she was chasing the pace early and uh, did make a bit of a bid on the turn. She got parked a little bit wide, getting up for the third spot. The winner, Belle Cherie, a three-year-old chestnut daughter of Belong to Me. She was bred in New York, owned by the Bell Meadow Farm and Lale Stables, trained, as I mentioned, by Phil Johnson, getting the win under Jose Velez, completing the mile in a 16th distance in 1 minute 42 seconds flat. Next, we're going to head to Philadelphia Park, where Monday's stakes feature was the, Philadelphia, the Pennsylvania Derby. Grade three event with a $300,000 purse. It's three-year-olds going a mile and an eighth on the main track. Let's head down to Philadelphia Park now for the call of the Pennsylvania Derby. And they're off to the 21st Pennsylvania Derby. Smart guy comes out well, as does Silver Chadra. Danson Rahi in between those two. Get the picture moving early from the outside along with Thunder Flash. Ghost Ring is also in the early mix. Five of them across the track now as they move into the first turn. In the second flight of horses, Lyricist, Silver Chadra, Harry's Halo at a four wide Who Is He? Late running Pineff has been taken back off the early pace and is some eight lengths behind midway round the first turn. Very, very moderate first quarter, 23 and four fifths. Smart Guy takes the field up the back stretch. He enjoys a length and a half lead. Dance and Raw, he hits second. A neck back to Thunder Flash, who was on the outside third. Get the picture is out the four path running in the fourth position. In behind horses is Ghost Ring. Ghost Ring is fifth. He's about three lengths off the lead. Another two back to Who Is He? Harry's Halo beginning to make steady progress. At the inside, Lyricist about six back. Silver Chadra has fallen back. And Pineff still eight back. As they head to the far turn, the half a slow 47 and three. Three furlongs to run. Smart guy now by Justin Eck. Confronted on the outside by Danson Rahi. Ghost Ring is now in perfect striking position. He is on the outside and comes on third. Get the picture, could not keep up. Thunder Flash has fallen back. Pineff beginning to move from the back of the pack along with Silver Chadra. But as they come to the top of the stretch, it's Smart Guy. Smart Guy bracing for the challenge of Ghost Ring. Those two come down to the eighth pole, their heads apart. Ghost Ring on the outside. Smart Guy on the inside. Stride for stride in mid stretch. Smart Guy on the inside, holding tough. Ghost Ring full out. Those two in a slugfest, 70 yards out. Smart Guy, Ghost Ring. Here's the line, a dramatic finish. Smart Guy has won it. Smart Guy by a head. Smart guy, one of the uh, the uh, the favorites here, showing good speed from gate to wire, gets out of the gate in very good order under Robert Colton, taking an easy lead. Uh, did have a little bit of challenge early, was able to open up over a length advantage on his field, holding on desperately by a head over Ghost Ring, who was a lukewarm favorite in the field. Uh, he was about 25 to 10 on the uh, as the final uh, lukewarm favorite here under Aaron Grider. Finishing third was Pineaff, making a big move late as he often does. Pineaff uh, generally gets off slow, makes the big rally, best known for his upset of uh, Menifee earlier in the year down at Tampa Bay in Menifee's first try around two turns. But uh, the winner here, smart guy, a very sharp winner, holding on very gamely by a head. Bred in Maryland, he is a three-year-old cult by Smarten. He is currently owned by the Goodfellas Stable, trained by Tim Ritchie, ridden to victory by Bob Colton, completing the mile in an eighth distance in one minute, 49 and two-fifths seconds. Next, we're going to head out to Remington Park for the Remington Park Derby. This is part of the Midwestern Circuit's uh, award series that is offered by, uh, by the DeBartolos and the DeBartolo Challenge. It's a $300,000 added event with a grade three status for three-year-olds, also going a mile and an eighth. Let's head out now to Remington Park for the call of the Remington Park Derby. And they're off in the 1999 Remington Park Derby. On the outside, Answer Lively broke superbly, and he gets over to the rail and takes the early lead. Balco Bay races in second. Maysville Slough is third between horses. On the outside, that's Jim's Mr. T, and Temperance Time is fifth early on. Going back, it's out and about. Then comes Stellar Brush, and it's eight lengths back to Big Brush, who trails the field as they head into the first turn. Answer Lively owns the lead up front by three lengths. In between horses is Maysville Slough. 
Then to the outside is Jim's Mr. T with Balco Bay, a very close fourth. Three more lengths from there then. That is Temperance Time running in fifth. Out and about is sixth. Stellar Brush, some 12 lengths from the leaders, is next to last. And his stable bait mate is another 12 lengths back. That is Big Brush trailing the field as they have five furlongs to home in the Remington Park Derby. Up front, it's Answer Lively by a length and a quarter. Maysville Slough is pressing the pace in second. Then to the outside, that is Jim's Mr. T in third. Dropping back a bit is Balco Bay. Here comes Temperance Time now between horses to lodge a bid. To the outside, Out and About is also making progress. Here goes Stellar Brush. He is now within eight lengths of the leaders as they swing into the far turn. It's Carlos Gonzalez and Answer Lively still controlling the pace by two lengths. Maysville Slough is right there in second. And to the outside, that's Jim's Mr. T. They're midway around the turn. Answer Lively has tried to slow things down. He's gone three quarters in 111 and four. Maysville Slough is between horses. Jim's Mr. T is still hanging tough in third. Now, Stellar Brush is desperately looking for racing room as he tries to split horses, and Temperance Time is on the far outside. They're into the stretch now. It's Answer Lively by two and a half lengths. Temperance Time is trying to run him down. Here comes Stellar Brush in third, and Temperance Time sticks his head in front. Answer Lively is game, but Temperance Time is going to win the 1999 Remington Park Derby. Temperance Time making a comeback. This is a horse that had been running very well down in uh, Oaklawn Park over the winter. Looked to be a potential uh, Kentucky Derby or Triple Crown candidate. He did have some problems. He, uh, he was laid off for a while. Coming back to the race is in very good form, though. Stalking the early pace on the outside, circling his rivals on the second turn, and just getting up there for a length and a half win at over 8-1, to one, beating Answer Lively last year's Breeders' Cup juvenile winner and uh, two-year-old champion who set the, all of the early fractions, uh, most of the going, and he did open up quite a nice lead early on, was not able to hold on to the win, did hold on to the play spot over Stellar Brush, coming in off of two good consecutive wins, Stellar Brush, make up, making up quite a bit of ground. He, as many of his, uh, his fellow sons of Broad Brush are, was well back late, but made up quite a bit of ground in the middle of the going was not able to threaten for one of the top two spots, however. Temperance Time, a three-year-old brown gelding, dark bay or brown gelding, bred in Arkansas, sired by Temperance Hill. He is owned by Robert Barker and Elmer Moses, trained by Kenny Smith, ridden to victory by Tim Ducey, completes the mile and an eighth distance in one minute 49 and two fifth seconds. We are going to pause now for our first break. When we come back, we'll be heading out to the West Coast for some racing action in the uh, closing weeks of Del Mar. We'll also, of course, be finishing up the Saratoga meeting, so please stay with us. Welcome back, everyone, to Horses and Courses. Next, we're going to be heading out to Southern California for the, De the Del Mar Stakes meeting as it's continuing. Before we get into stakes action, we do have a special race to bring you. This was a race that was run last Friday. It was the return to the races of Prime Timber from Bob Baffert's barn. This is a horse that had been considered one of the better horses going into the Kentucky Derby. He ran a very good fourth in the Kentucky Derby uh, and had not run since that time. He had been training fairly well for Bob Baffert. So we're going to go out to Del Mar now for the, the second race that was run last Friday at, uh, at Del Mar. It was a non-winners of three other than maiden claiming or starter event. Also run as a, it was run as an optional claiming race, although I believe all of the horses were in this race as a, uh, under the allowance conditions that the race allowed. Let's head out to Del Mar now for the, uh, the return to the races of Prime Timber. 
away to go. Free Fry Dreams out fast from the outside gate. Crows between horses and Kona Wind the Grey on the inside. Prime Timber is settling down in the four spot and Storm Wreck is last. They head to the seven eights and it's Kona Wind on the inside. Crows right up alongside and Refried Dreams. Those three take them into the first turn. Prime Timber is content to race four and a half lengths off the leader. And then there's another four and a half back to Storm Wreck. Past the three-quarter pole they go, and Refried Dream's going to go to put the pressure on on the outside. Now he's quickening the pace. On the inside comes Kona, Wind, and Crows between those two. Still this gap of four lengths back to Prime Timber, racing along in the four spot. And now there's a gap of six back to Storm Wreck. They head to the half-mile pole, and now it's Refried Dreams with a narrow advantage. Kona Wind right there, second. Crows is third. Prime Timber getting closer now. He's only three lengths off the leaders as they go into the far turn. Still a gap of six back to Storm Rack. Three-eighths of a mile to go, and Kona Wind and Refried Dreams stride for stride. Crows on the outside, and Prime Timber right in contention. Now the four of them bunch, and even Storm Rack starting to close in from behind. They bunch up as they come to the quarter pole. Kona Wind is the leader. Prime Timber now has room between horses. Crows on the outside. Refried Dreams did not fire today. He backs out of it. Storm Wreck running on from last. They come for home. Kona Wind, Crows. Prime Timber's not doing enough. He's one paced in the lane. Storm Wreck is coming late, but it's Kona Wind and Crows, the two, to dispute it. Kona Wind on the inside. All heart finding more. Crows can't get by him, and Kona Wind's going to win it. Kona Wind wins it three parts of a length to Crows. Then Storm Wreck. Well, as you saw, Prime Timber did not return to the races in the form that had been expected of him. Dropping into this non-winners of three allowance condition race, he did have a hard time here. He never really got himself uh, into the going of the race. Prime Timber is a horse that generally likes to run from a little bit off the pace. He did get a ground-saving trip under David Flores, but uh, not the kind of return to the races that trainer Bob Baffert had been expecting. The winner here, Kona Wind, set the uh, pressure the early pace, uh, set by Refry Dreams and faded, uh, Reef, who did fade into last. Uh, Kona Wind held on very nicely for three-quarter length win at over 23 to one. Finishing second was Crows up from Argentina, who uh, dueled early and was able to shake off the third place horse, Storm Week, who did save some ground and made a little bit of a move into the lane. Prime Timber, as you saw, did, uh, did fade a little bit and finished fourth after making a little bit of a rally during the, uh, during the turn. But Prime Timber, uh, Bob Baffert, did take the responsibility for the disappointing effort of Prime Timber, claiming that he did not train the horse as hard as he perhaps should have. Prime Timber has a reputation as a horse that does not train particularly well, but uh, I would expect that Prime Timber now, with having the, uh, the effort of a race under his belt, will return to the races in much better shape than, uh, than he went into this allowance race, and uh, I'm sure will come out of it having benefited somewhat from the uh, from the experience. The winner here, Kona Goal, or Kona Wind rather, a uh, four-year-old cult sired by Summer Squall. He is owned by Mr. and Mrs. Jerome Moss and trained by Melvin Studi, getting the upset win here under Matt Garcia in one minute, 35 and three-fifths seconds. Next, we're going to head right into grade one stakes racing action from Del Mar, where on Saturday, the featured race was the Ramona Handicap. $400,000 for three-year-olds and up fillies and mares. They're going a mile and an eighth on the turf course. Let's head out to Del Mar for the call of the Ramona Handicap. All set for the Ramona. Gates open, feel for the Ramona handicap, sent on the way, and Bella Chiara bounces away on top in the white cap. Isle de France comes to join her, and Tranquility Lake going up between those two. Tuesday in the white sleeves is settling down in the fourth position, and Sierra Virgin has the white blinkers on the inside of her. Vyatka is racing in mid-pack, seven lengths off these leaders, and K-Bell inside of that. Happy and you know it is back third last, then comes Spanish Fern, and Sapphire Ring is last. Ten lengths would cover the Ramona field. Into the far turn they go, and Bala Chiara, sensible pace, not flying, but just taking them along at a steady pace, leads it by a length. Now here's Tranquility Lake, the favorite, very comfortable in the second spot. Chris McCarran got her in a long range, just striding easily. In third comes Isle de France, and they've been followed by two's lose in fourth, five lengths off these leaders. Then comes Sierra Virgin in the white blinkers. Vyatka is in mid-pack with six lengths to make up, followed by Kay Bell. Happy and you know it is third lash. She's got eight lengths to make up, then Spanish Fern and Sapphire Ring continues to trail. 
They head to the half mile pole and there goes Tranquility Lake up now to put the pressure on Balakiara. Balakiara at the rail and Tranquility Lake stride for stride into the turn and now here comes Tuzla and she's going well too. Tuzla in the white colours looking for somewhere to run. Isle de France on the outside. Then we come back to Kay Bell who's starting to get involved in the fifth spot. They come to the top of the lane. Tranquility Lake kicks for home, tackled by Tuzla and it's Tranquility Lake and Tuzla knows and knows with an eighth to go, but Tuzla is going the better of the two. Kay Bell is unwinding a late run with Happy and You Know It and Spanish Fern, but it's Tuzla in front. Happy and You Know It, Spanish Fern, Kay Bell, they hit the wire. Tuzla wins. Tuzla, Happy and You Know It. Tuzla getting the win here is her first win since joining the Bob Baffert barn from just off the pace. She was running about third or fourth most of the way in the early going, stalking the pace just a bit off the rail, split rivals and uh, just rallied to hold clear by a head of Happy and You Know It who was charging hard late. Happy and You Know It, the New Zealand bred who had beaten Tuzla in their last, uh, their last run at one another, comes back here to run a very game second behind that rival. Finishing third, also closing from well off the pace, was Spanish Fern, another long shot. Interestingly enough in this race, Tuzla, who had uh, come out of, this, out of a very good performance to run second, went off at well over four to one. Happy and you know it, the winner of her last start, beating Tuzla, had actually went off in this race at almost 16 to one. Heavy favorite in the race was Tranquility Lake, who you saw running around, run, running second most of the way of the round, pressing the, uh, the early pace. She was stalking. Early, early leader Bella Chiara, to, or Tranquility Lake rather, under Chris McCarran, did fade into the fifth spot as the even money favorite. The winner, Tuzla, is a five-year-old French bred bay mare. She was sired by Panoramic, a British bred horse. She's owned by the Stoner Side Stable. That's a recent acquisition by Stoner Side. Trained, as I mentioned, by Bob Baffert. Ridden to victory by David Flores, completing the mile and an eighth distance on the turf course, one minute 47 and three fifth seconds. Next, we're going to head back to Del Mar for Sunday's running of the Del Mar Breeders' Cup Handicap. This is a grade two event with a $200,000 purse. It's three-year-olds and up complete, completing a mile on the main track. Let's head out to Del Mar now for the call of the Del Mar Breeders' Cup Handicap. Way to go to a perfect start. Holly Combe from the inside gate, very fast, and Holly Combe shoots off to lead them early. Lord Crumbie's second, Old Trieste now tugging his way up to the second spot, and Thibodeau is right there in force, flying with Eagles, has no alternative but to go wide. They could not be going any quicker out here, they flying. Then we come back to Bold Words, who's racing six, seven lengths off the leaders. It's another three back to eternity range, and Army of One is last. Past the three-quarter pole they go, and Holly Holycomb, the leader, trying to slow them down just a little now, but Old Trieste is right there, keeping the pressure on Holly Holycomb. Those two lead it with five-eighths to go. Lord Crombie at the rail is racing third and flying with eagles on the outside of him. Thibodeau is in the fifth spot. He's five lengths off the leader. has been followed by Bold Words. Eternity Range is second last, a good nine lengths off these leaders, and last a long way is Army of One. Less than a half mile to go, and Holly Combe kicks into the turn, leading it by a neck, but Old Trieste's breathing down his neck second, and Old Trieste, a confident look back there from Chris McCarran on Old Trieste as they ride up alongside a Holly Combe who's starting to be niggled out now. These two approach the quarter pole together. Flying with Eagles is now coming to get involved in the white blinkers. Lord Crombie did not go on. At the top of the lane, and Old Trieste and Holly Combe, what a race. They nose and nose flying with eagles is next and then bold words but it's holly comb old trieste and holly comb all heart is shaking off old trieste flying with eagles running on third but holly comb at his very best today and holly comb and gary stevens take the del mar breeders cup handicap flying with eagles holly comb in a bit of an upset here uh, the favorite in this event was of course old trieste at four to ten Holly Combe getting the jump out of Old Tri on Old Trieste out of the gate, getting the best position on the racetrack and uh, was able to hold off Old Trieste in the early going. We did see uh, Old Trieste start to, um, start to fade a little bit and just lost the second spot to the late charging 
flying with eagles. If you noticed at the beginning of this race, Old Trieste didn't get the best of starts. He didn't get a, a bad start, didn't spot his field any kind of distance, but uh, not the sharpest type of break for a horse that generally has shown very good speed. But this race at a mile, perhaps a little short for Old Trieste. He's done his best front running and uh, races going about a mile and an eighth to a mile and a quarter. And uh, remains to be seen where they are going to go with, uh, with Old Trieste, a horse that certainly has a lot of potential, has not really been able to live up to it due to some, uh, some problems with his feet. He's got uh, very delicate feet. But Holly Combe, very impressive here. Gary Stevens keeping the, uh, the measure of Old Trieste on, uh, under Chris McCarron all the way around, getting the best part of the racetrack and able to draw off to win as Flying Eagles makes a late charge just to nip Old Trieste for the third spot. The winner here, Holly Comb, is a Kentucky-bred five, four-year-old, rather. He was sired by Capote. He's owned by John A. Toffin and trained by Paco Gonzalez. So the connections of Freehouse get a stakes win here at Del Mar. Now they don't have uh, Freehouse running any longer, but another stakes winner for the uh, Toffin and Gonzalez combination. Gary Stevens aboard. Holly Comb complete, completes the mile in one minute, 35 and two-fifths seconds. Monday's feature at Del Mar was the Del Mar Derby, a grade two event for $300,000 purse. It's three-year-olds going a mile and an eighth over the turf course. Let's head out to Del Mar once more for the call of the Del Mar Derby. Hill for the Del Mar Derby sent on their way. Zanetti coming away smoothly on the outside. We have Domination going up to lead them and Walk That Walker showing early speed. Fighting Falcon in the white cap, tucking in just behind the leaders. Then comes Roundabout and Eagleton in the white colors is in McPack. Make your mark racing towards the rear. On the outside is Major Hero. And at the back of the pack is Val Royal and in Frank's honor, 10 lengths off the leaders. Past the stands, first time round, and Domination setting a good pace. Domination going clear to lead it by a length and three quarters. The net is in second. Fighting Falcon has the perfect spot in the third spot as they swing into the far turn. Roundabout racing fourth and walk that walk is in fifth. Then comes Eagleton up alongside Major Heroes, six lengths off the leaders. Then it's three back to Val Royal. In Frank's honor is starting to make his run on the extreme outside, and that leaves Make Your Mark last. They slowed the pace right down in that turn now. They're not in any hurry as they make their way down the back stretch. Domination joined by Zanetti. Fighting Falcon, a close up third. Now here comes Major Hero to take the fourth spot. In between horses, walk that walk, roundabout at the rail. Eagleton racing along in seventh. In Frank's honor is eighth. Seven lengths off the leaders. Then comes Val Royal and make your mark as last. Five sixteens to go in the Del Mar Derby and Zanetti kicks on for home. Zanetti from domination. Fighting Falcon is racing in the third spot. And now Val Royal is starting to wind up from behind with In Frank's honor. Those two going to come flying on the grandstand side. Homeward bound Zanetti fighting Falcon in the white cap. In Frank's honor and Val Royal, the two on the extreme outside are flying. Val Royal's ducking in a little. Fighting Falcon, Val Royal in Frank's honor. Fighting Falcon, Val Royal. Val Royal to get up. Val Royal wins the derby. Val Royal. Val Royal, a French bred under Corey Nakatani, coming from far back early. He was shut out at the start, shut off badly. Uh, Corey took him back, made a nice wide move into the lane. He did lug in just a little bit and was able to get up late by a half a length over Fighting Falcon, who had been up close to the pace early on, just run down in the shadow of the wire for the, for the wind spot here. Finishing in the third spot in Frank's honor, another horse that was unhurried early made a five wide move just outside of Val Royale into the turn, was not able to make up any more ground on Fighting Falcon, was about a length and a quarter behind the place, uh, behind the place horse under the wire here. The winner, Val Royale, a French bred son of Royal Academy, getting the win here for his owner. Uh, owner David Milch of television production fame, trained by Julio Canani, ridden to victory by Corey Nakatani, completing the mile and an eighth on the turf course in one minute 48 and two fifth seconds. Next, we're going to head back to New York to Finger Lakes Racetrack, where we had a couple of stakes races run on Monday's Labor Day program. To start things off, we're going to begin with the New York Oaks. This is a $60,000 event for three-year-old New York bred fillies. The, the purse, $60,000. The distance, a mile and a sixteenth. 
Let's head out to Finger Lakes now for the call of the New York Oaks. They're off in the New York Oaks. And they get away to a good even start. Edging out will be a call your bid for the lead. Jiggy with it, hustles up on the outside between horses. Alley Bull now drives through. Then we come back to Luck of Bounds. Belongs to Modi on the outside. Streaking Woman and Peroxide Lady. They make the way around the clubhouse turn. Jiggy with it, angles over toward the rail and will take the lead. Moves off by a length. Call your bid in on the rail, in between horses, alley ball, and on the outside, Luck abounds coming on. And Luck abounds moves up after second and moves on the leader. They start the run up the back stretch, uh, going the quarter in 24 flat. Jiggy with it a length. Luck abounds in second. Belongs to Moni, inches up and moves up at contention on the outside third. Alley ball is between horses fourth. Call your bid down to the inside. Then there's three lengths back, Peroxide Lady and Streaking Woman. They approach the half mile pole. They go the half in 48 and one. Up on the front end, Jiggy with it still there with a three part of a length lead. Luck abounds, uh, well now will pressure alongside in second. Belongs to Moni uh, on the outside, just three parts of a length in third and moves on the leaders. Benner's better than three and a half legs back. Alley ball on the outside. Call your bid in on the rail. Then we drop back a four to Streaking Woman and Peroxide Lady. Three quarters, one twelve and four. And they come toward the top of the stretch in the New York Oaks. And taking the lead will be Luck abounds. Belongs to Money up on the outside, trying to come back. Jiggy with it. But with an eighth of a mile to go, it's Frank Lovato Jr. And Luck abounds, drawing off by two. Belongs to Money his game. Tries to move on the leader, but through the lane. Luck abounds still there. Length and a half and to the wire. Luck abounds will go away by two to win the New York Oaks. Belongs to Money a game second and Jiggy with it third. Luck abounds, a filly that we've seen running competitively on the New York uh, Naira circuit, shipping up to Finger Lakes, getting the win in the New York Oaks. Nice, impressive winner here by two and a quarter lengths over Belongs to Money, a filly that closed from well off the pace into the play spot. Running third, Jiggy with it, the early leader, did fade into the third spot, held on fairly well after assuming a commanding lead, getting holding on for the third spot here with a fairly long advantage over the rest of the field. The winner, Luck Abounds, is a, uh, a nice filly that had been doing very well all the way through her career in, uh, in competitive racing in New York, particularly at Belmont Park and Aqueduct over the winter. Shipping up to Finger Lakes, a nice win here for owners Darlene Belinsky and Gary Contessa. She is a New York bred daughter of technology. I'm sure we'll be seeing her back in uh, more and more of the stakes racing that's available to the New York Reds throughout the Fall Championship Series at Belmont Park. She completes the mile in a 16th distance under Frank Lovato Jr. in 1 minute 46 and 3 fifth seconds. Next on the stakes racing card from Finger Lakes on Monday was the New York Breeders Futurity, a $100,000 added event for two-year-old New York Reds. They're going six furlongs on the main track. Let's head out to Finger Lakes once more for the call of the New York Fu Breeders Futurity. They're off in the 37th running of the New York State Breeders Futurity. And getting out quickest will be play a sultry tune on the outside. True Force now streaking through on the rail now to take command. Lyra will run third. Shining Glory is a length back and forth, moving on the outside. I'm a classy two-fifth. Image Maker splitting the entry. Bids Femme in on the rail and on the outside, Jovial Dancer. They zip a quarter, 22 flat. And True Force has the lead, uh, three parts of a length, prompted along by Play of Sultry two in second. The rest of the field well back, better than a four or five lengths. Image Maker coming on in third. Lyra is into the rail fourth. Then there's a gap of three lengths. The entry running right together on the outside, Jovial Dancer and Bids Femme. They turn for home the half, 45 and one of the New York State Breeders Fraternity, True Force. Play a sultry tune, but the strong with the outside image maker coming on with Chris DiCarlo. And Chris DiCarlo with image maker blows by the front runners. And impressively, image maker will streak away, opening up the lead by better than five to win the New York State Breeders Fraternity. Play a sultry tune second, and True Force was third. 
Image Maker, another horse that we'd seen uh, in New York down at the uh, at the Belmont Meet, as well as at Saratoga, getting the win here under Chris DiCarlo, coming from off the pace and winning by six and three quarter open lengths here in a very impressive performance. Trainer Jim Bond returning to his old stomping grounds in fine form to take this race worth well over $100,000. Finishing in the second spot, play a sultry tune, another horse that had been running very competitively at Saratoga, who was the, actually the second choice uh, in the running here, ran a very nice race to be second. Started uh, with a little bit of a little bit of a bumpy start, but did get up to press the early pace of True Force, who held on fairly well for the third spot here under Harry Vega. True Force did go off as the favorite having uh, come in off of a very impressive performance at Saratoga. The winner, Image Maker, a two-year-old cult by Distinctive Pro, bred in New York. He is owned by James F. Edwards, trained, as I mentioned, by H. James Bond, ridden to victory by Chris DiCarlo, completes the six furlong distance in 111 and two-fifths seconds. We are going to pause now for our second break, and when we return, we will have the final weekend of stakes action to bring to you from Saratoga Racecourse. Please stay tuned. It's opening weekend at Belmont Park with three grade one events scheduled. On Saturday, three-year-olds and up go a mile and three-eighths on the turf in the grade one $500,000 Man of War Stakes. Three-year-old fillies try their luck in the grade one $200,000 Gazelle Handicap at a mile and an eighth. Then Phillies and Mares, three-year-olds and up, run in the $75,000 added Floral Park handicap at six furlongs. Sunday at Belmont, it's a grade one $200,000 Garden City Breeders' Cup handicap for three-year-old Phillies at a mile and an eighth on the turf. From Delaware Park on Saturday, it'll be the $100,000 Wilmington handicap for three-year-olds and up at six furlongs. Also on tap is a $75,000 Owner's Day handicap for three-year-olds and up at a mile and a sixteenth. And the $50,000 added George Rosenberger Memorial for Phillies and Mares three-year-olds and up at a mile and a sixteenth. From Calder on Saturday, Phillies and Mares three-year-olds and up go a mile and a sixteenth on the turf in the $50,000 Noble Royalty Stakes. Catch all of the exciting action this weekend at any Capital OTB location. Welcome back, everyone, to Horses and Courses. Next, we are going to show you the final weekend and week and weekend of stakes racing action at Saratoga. Of course, a very successful 1999 meet for Saratoga, both for the Racing Association and for those of us here at Capital Off Track Betting. Getting the last week of stakes racing action kicked off was Wednesday's Grade 3 Saranac Stakes. This is a $100,000 added Grade 3 for three-year-olds going a mile and 3 16th over the turf course. Let's head up to Saratoga for the call of the Saranac Stakes. They're in the game. And they're off. Toward the inside, it's gone fishing with a bit of early speed. Valid Reprised is in between horses, along with King's Design and Big Rascal on the outside. Not much initiative early, but gone fishing is in front. King's Design alongside to offer some mild pressure, with Big Rascal to their outside running third. And then down toward the inside, it's Phi Beta Dock Racing in fourth, Valid Reprised is fifth, followed by Monarch's Bays. At the back of the pack, so rakish, and uh, good night is the early trailer. Field moving around the clubhouse, turning, gone fishing, steps out by three. Gone fishing now beginning to pick it up as they move into the back stretch, opening up by four and a half lengths. And then it's a King's Design second by a head. On the outside, Big Rascal. Big Rascal moves into second. King's Design now back racing in third, followed by Valid Reprise fourth, and Phi Beta Dock and Monarch's Maze. And at the back of the pack, still good night and so rakish. Down the back stretch, gone fishing the opening half mile, 46 seconds flat. Gone fishing running aggressively with four furlongs to go, still with a lengthy advantage. Five lengths going into the far turn. Big Rascal picks it up now and edges into second position, getting a bit closer to Gone Fishing. On the outside, Valid Reprise is put to a drive third. Monarch's Base is moving fourth on the outside now. Then Phi Beta Dock in behind horses, stalled in traffic. Phi Beta Dock followed by Good Night, gaining on Good Fishing with two furlongs to go. Gone Fishing wide off the turn. Big Rascal slips through an opening on the inside. Phi Beta Dock is running room and comes charging through. Monarch's Maze is there on the outside. Valid Reprised is 
Fast fifth, good night six. Less than a furlong to go. Five beta dock up to take a clear lead. It's five beta dock in front by three. Monarchs Maze and Big Rascal. It'll be that way on the wire. Five beta dock. Looking smart here to win it by two and a half lengths. Monarchs May second, Big Rascal third. Phi Beta Doc getting the win from uh, just off the pace. He was never far back. This is a horse that has uh, shown a little bit of ability to show speed, although his most recent efforts have been from well off the pace, splitting rivals and drawing clear by two and a quarter lengths. Much the best over rival Monarchs Maze, who was closing hard late under Jerry Bailey, making up a lot of ground. A colt who had just recently left the allowance ranks, but certainly seems to have an awful lot of potential going uh, longer distances on the turf. A very good ride on this one by Jerry Bailey, who kept him as close as possible to the rail. Uh, he was uh, out in about the second to third spot, but made a, made a uh, rather shallow move into the turn, saving a little bit of ground, made a good run into the second spot. Finishing third, a bit of a long shot here. Big Rascal, who was uh, rated outside in the early going made a bit of an inside move on the turn and stayed along well for the show spot here. The winner though, Phi Beta Doc, a very impressive three-year-old gelding sired by Doc's leader. He was bred in Kentucky, owned by Dennis Foster and Robert Leonard. He is trained by Robert Leonard, ridden to victory by Ramon Dominguez, completing the mile and 3 16th distance in a new course record, one minute 51 and 3 fifths seconds. Continuing with Saratoga Stakes action for the final week was the Albany Handicap run on Thursday. This is a New York bred event with a $125,000 added purse. It's for three-year-olds going a mile and an eighth on the main track. Let's head up to Saratoga for Tom's call of the Albany Handicap. And they're off. Awkward beginning there for Hearts at Risk and Gander comes out running for the early lead. Flores personal boy and corroborator on the outside. Then it's Hearts at Risk, who's backed off just a bit to run in fourth position, and Go Union Go to be the early trailer. As the field moves around the clubhouse turn, it's Gander with the lead, corroborator right with him now on the outside. A length and a half back to Flores, personal boy, who tracks and saves ground. A break of three back to Hearts at Risk, who's now dropped about a half a dozen from the duel that's beginning to develop out front. And Go Union Go trails the field after an opening quarter in a mild 24 and 2 fifth seconds. A tepid first quarter there for the two front runners, Corroborator and Gander, and those two continue to match strides on the lead and continue to run fairly comfortably. They pulled away from Flores' personal boy by four. It's another three to go, Union go. Hearts at risk is now dropped back to be the trailer. The opening half mile in 47 and 4 fifth seconds. The field approaching the half mile pole with Gander and Corroborator still matching strides. Their strides synchronized moving into the far turn. Three lengths to Flores' personal boy, another two to go, Union go, and another three back to Hearts at Risk, the trailer. It has been Gander and Garoborator matching strides the entire way, and they're still that way as they come to the top of the stretch. Just in behind, Flores' personal boy is getting closer third. They've run three quarters in one eleven and four with two furlongs to go. It's Gander who still holds a narrow lead. Corroborator's under the whip, and he's dropping back. It is Gander coming to the eighth pole with the lead. Go Union Go is looking for some running room now. Down inside, in behind Gander. On the far outside, here comes Hearts at Risk, who's moving late into the final 100 yards. Gander pulling away. Gander drawing off through the stretch. Gander wins by five and a half lengths. Go Union Go comes on to be second, and Hearts at Risk was third. Gander getting the front end win here under rider Pat Day. Very, uh, very impressive performance by this uh, this three-year-old cultist. He's drawing off to win by over five lengths, well in hand, for his second consecutive win at the Saratoga racetrack. He seems to be a horse for course. Came off a couple of good runs on the turf. Switched back to uh, the main track last time in a sprint. This time stretched to a mile and an eighth. No problem handling it here for Gander. He was chased early, as you saw, by Corroborator, who was the heavy favorite at even money. He did fade very late in the going. Uh, Corroborator had been coming off of a rather disappointing effort, after which it was found that he had had an infection of some sort, some breathing problems. Apparently, he has uh, not returned to his finest form as Go Union Go closes from last into the second spot at the, as uh, second longest shot on the board at 9-1. to one. Hearts at Risk, another uh, well-renowned well closer, 
also came wide and, uh, and late, but was neither were able to challenge Gander as he finishes uh, considerably ahead of the rest of his field. Gander is a gray or roan three-year-old colt uh, by Cormorant, so he should be able to handle both the turf and the, uh, the main track, as well as a muddy surface. If you see him on a mud, you, uh, you may have a good chance with Gander. He did break his maiden at Saratoga in the off going last summer. He is owned by the Gatsa Stable, trained by Charlie Asimakopoulos. Gets the win in under, under rider Pat Day at the mile and an eighth distance in one minute 48 and four fifth seconds. Next, we're going to head into Friday's stakes action at Saratoga, the Grade One Spin Away. This is for $200,000. Two-year-old filly is going seven furlongs on the main track. The stakes debut of the highly touted unbeaten Surfside. Let's head up to Saratoga now for the call of the Spin Away Stakes. And they're off. Asher went to her knees right at the break. Surfside came out in stride. Up for the early lead. It's Surfside to the front. Circle of Life is right there with her, and Miss Wineshine flashing speed from the rail, and it's Miss Wineshine now in front. Circle of Life and Surfside, and those three heads apart as they continue their run up the backstretch. It's two lengths back to Asher, who's now running fourth after that clumsy beginning. In between horses comes March Magic, and down toward the inside, Dance for Dixie. Moving down the backstretch, Miss Wineshine, three quarters of a length. Circle of Life is second, and Surfside has tailed off into third. A lively first quarter there that goes in 20 two and one fifth seconds. Miss Wineshine carries the field round the far turn. Circle of Life right there at her flank, second by two. Surfside is called on for run at the midway point on the turn by Pat Day. She's still almost three lengths behind. And March Magic is coming on. The field coming to the top of the stretch. The half in an eye popping 44 and four fifth seconds. Miss Wineshine shaken up by Jerry Bailey. Circle of Rife right there to the throat latch. It's Circle of Life in front. Circle of Life coming to the eighth pole with the lead. Miss Wineshine is game and she's trying to battle back. Those two dip and tuck. Surfside third, March Magic fourth. Circle of Life, 100 yards to go. She's in front by length. Surfside on the outside coming belatedly. They're under the wire and Circle of Life has won by a length and a half. Surfside second, Miss Wineshine finishing third. The final time was one minute 23 and one fifth seconds. Little bit of an upset here is Circle of Life from the Todd Pletcher barn. Gets the win, drawing off by a length and a quarter over Surfside with Miss Wineshine back in the third spot. You saw Miss Wineshine going to the early lead Circle of Life under John Velasquez just to her outside, pressing that early pace, responded very nicely. For Velasquez, when asked, Surfside, who was behind horses a little bit early, uh, Pet Day did take her back a little bit, seemed to have some trouble getting her into the running early, but uh, she made a very nice, very game effort here to get into the second spot. Kind of interesting uh, when you see a young horse change tactic with some success, she certainly did run a very good race, despite the fact that she was handed her first defeat of her rather brief career. Finishing third, the early pace setter, Miss Wineshine, who faded a little bit late, didn't have quite enough left in the drive to hold off Surfside for the second spot. Circle of Life coming off of a very good performance early in the meet. She had run last at the Schuylerville Stakes at the, the very beginning of the Saratoga meeting where she ran a very good performance behind Magical Mystery Cat, had been training well and adding Lasix for her first run at a grade one stake, made it a successful one. Circle of Life, a two-year-old filly sired by Belong to Me, bred in New York, owned by Michael Tabor, trained by Todd Pletcher, ridden to victory by John Velasquez, completes the seven furlong distance in one minute 23 and one fifth seconds. Saturday's stakes feature was the grade one hopeful stakes. This race unfortunately marred by the, uh, the early withdrawal of More Than Ready, the unbeaten colt who has just been dominating the two-year-old division this year. He was, uh, he was treated for a fever and uh, taken out of training for a couple of days. It left a much more wide open competitive field of two-year-olds going seven furlongs for a $200,000 purse. Let's head up to Saratoga now for the call of the hopeful stakes. And they're off. A little awkward start there for Buffalo Affair. Exciting story comes out running and uh, toward the inside Z Trouble is there, or Z uh, 
coolers there in Trouble City and toward the outside Sykes Alive, the field moving down the back stretch. Exciting story is the early leader. Sykes Alive pressing hard. Chancellor MH is running third. And it's two lengths back on the outside. Z Cool is fourth. High yield fifth. And high yield now has moved through an opening. He's fourth toward the inside. Z Cool running in fifth. Afternoon affair four wide sixth. And Trouble City is down inside seventh. Four lengths back to Buffalo Prayer. And it was a late start for Settlement. Settlement is the last of them all. They zip through an opening quarter in 22 and one fifth seconds. Exciting story and sex alive. And those two dueling and they are tracked intently by High Yield who swings into action on the outside third. The half went in 45 seconds flat. There's a break of another four lengths. Afternoon affair is still a threat. Fourth on the outside. Trouble City and Settlement now coming on. At the top of the stretch, exciting story and High Yield. High Yield is in front at the eighth pole. It is High Yield in front. Exciting story is now second, and Settlement is third and closing belatedly, but time is running out. It's High Yield, the leader by four. Settlement and Exciting Story, and they're coming down to the line, and High Yield will win it. The winner by four and a half lengths. Settlement finishing second, and Exciting Story was third. High Yield and a very impressive winner of the Grade 1 Hopeful Stakes, drawing off to win after showing decent speed inside made a wide three wide move on the turn and draw clear very handily under Jerry Bailey winning this one by five lengths as the uh, 18 to 18 to 10 favorite just under two to one here making a nice move into the play spot with settlement under Shane Sellers who did not get off to a very good start Settlement, a little bit of a, a large cult, has a little bit of trouble breaking from the gate, but seems to be doing better and better as the distances are stretching out. He's got a little more time to get himself running. Made a nice accelerating move into the play spot here. Exciting story, who had set the early part of the pace, was able to hold on for the show spot. He did weaken behind the front two, uh, two leaders. He was pressed pretty hard by Sykes alive in the early going, so those two did fade into the third and fourth spot. High Yield earns grade one status here for his owners, Bob and Beverly Lewis, and Mr. and Mrs. or uh, Mrs. John Magner and Mr. Michael Tabor. He is trained by Wayne Lucas, a two-year-old chestnut colt bred in Pennsylvania, sired by Stormcat, getting the ground-saving trip under jockey Jerry Bailey, completing the seven furlongs in one minute twenty-two and four fifth seconds. Sunday's featured stakes race at Saratoga, the Grade 2 Diana Handicap. This is a $300,000 event for three-year-olds and up fillies and mares going a mile and an eighth on the turf course. Let's head back up to Saratoga now for the call of Sunday's Diana Handicap. And the rough. Kumba Mello breaks alertly from the inside. Witchful Thinking comes up to join the early leaders along with Heritage of Gold. Witchful Thinking to the front. Kumba Mello taken well in hand to sit back second. Heritage of Gold laying just outside the lead in third position. Moss Flowers between horses fourth. And to her inside, Silka Key Service racing in fifth position. And farther back, bursting fourth is now sixth. Soaring Soft who's a bit wide going into the turn. She's seventh and Tampico. Mingling glances is the last of them all as Witchful thinking cruises through an opening quarter in 23 and 1 heritage of gold in second and kumbamela under a hard hold in third position down inside then at Silka Key Service, fourth on the inside of Moss Flower, who's now settled about five and a half lengths from the lead. Then farther back, it's bursting fourth and soaring softly, now eight lengths from front running Witchful Thinking. At the back of the pack are Tampico and Mingling Glances. The opening half mile, 47 and three fifth seconds. Four and a half furlongs from home. It is still Witchful Thinking in front, unchallenged so far on the lead. Heritage of Gold continues to run along in second. Kumba Mellis had a perfect trip while under restraint in third position. Moss Flower has asked for her run now. She's fourth on the outside, three lengths from the lead, and there goes Soaring Softly. Soaring Softly is rallying as they approach the top of the stretch, but she'll be forced to come wide. As the field turns for home, Witchful thinking a narrow lead. Heritage of Gold on the outside. Kumba Mella in behind. Moss Flower driving on the outside. Coming into the final furlong. Heritage of Gold is a short lead. Witchful thinking gives Gives way second. Kumba Mella in with an upside chance. Moss Flower doing her best, but she's still fourth. Down to the finish now. Heritage of Gold in front, and Heritage of Gold is the winner. A length and a half. Kumba Mella second, Moss Flower third. 
heritage of gold drawing off to win here. Little bit of an upset at six to one. She was placed well by Shane Sellers, never far back behind the early pace setting. Witchful thinking and uh, made a very nice move here just to the outside of Kumba Mila going around the turn. Shane Sellers had her well in hand drawing off to win by a length. Kumba Mila does make a rally moving up from out of the uh, out of the spot right along the hedge where she ran most of the way around under wraps by uh, Jose Santos drawing away from uh, from the, the third spot horse Moss Flower. Moss Flower making her turf debut was uh, was not really up close in the early going did rally somewhat into the third spot Kumba Mila she had rallied into second late in the going Kumba Mila was able to get up and uh, and just edge her for the second spot here uh, favorite in this race at two to one was soaring softly unfortunately the pace scenario just did not set up well for soaring softly early fractions of 23.45 47.66 rather sluggish for these type of horses but they accelerated late it was a uh, mile and 134.50 final time very quick 145 and 4 fifth seconds so heritage of gold uh, really was running into the fastest part of the race when she accelerated around the turn unfortunately those those type of early fractions take horses like soaring softly and tampico who closed from far off the pace right out of their game at the very beginning of the race. The winner, Heritage of Gold, very successful on both dirt and turf, getting graded grade two status for the first time on the turf. A daughter, a four-year-old daughter of gold legend. She was bred in Kentucky, owned by Jack Gary and trained by Tom Amos, completing the mile and an eighth on the turf course under Shane Sellers in the very quick one minute 45 and four fifth seconds. Finishing off the stakes racing action for the 1999 Saratoga meeting, the 131st meeting here at Saratoga, and a very successful one it was. Finishing off the, uh, the stakes racing for the year up here, the Labor Day feature, the Forgo Handicap, grade two event, $250,000 added. It's three-year-olds and up going seven furlongs on the main track. Let's head back up to Saratoga for one more time for the call of the Forgo Handicap. And they're off. Crafty Friend breaks alertly. It's Crafty Friend up for the early lead. Secret Firm is there, and there goes a firm success prumming up on the inside. Good and tough with the early pace. Just in behind the mountaintop races in fifth position. Sir Bear is alongside him. Artax is seventh at the rail, five and a half lengths from the lead. Inti Dob is eighth, and Liberty Gold is ninth. Down the back stretch, Crafty Friend is joined on the lead by a firm success. The opening quarter in 22 and one fifth seconds. Secret Firm is third. Good and tough disputing the pace while four wide. Mountaintop kept within close striking range. Sir Bear running six. He's only three lengths from the lead. Our tax is wheeled to the outside to launch his bid. Three lengths to Liberty Gold and Inti Dob. Those two about nine lengths from the lead. It's still Crafty Friend and a firm success and they are letting out all stops full throttle after a half in 44 and one fifth seconds. A wicked half mile here between Crafty Friend and a firm success and they are heads apart and driving into the stretch together. Three lengths back and Sir Bear is running third. Our tax is coming with his run. He's still five lengths behind. Down toward the inside mountaintop. Less than a furlong to go. Gary Stevens and Crafty Friend, they've got a narrow lead. A firm success. Jorge Chavez battling on. Those two heads apart. Down to the line. Crafty Friend has won it in a hard-earned decision. Seven tough furlongs in 121 and 1. Crafty Friend get, keeping his nose in front, uh, getting the win here by about a neck over last year's Forgo winner, affirmed success. Very, very exciting race to watch. Crafty Friend hustled to the front under Gary Stevens in the green and white silks of the Thoroughbred Corporation. Affirmed success, chasing almost every step of the way. Never, uh, and those two rivals just really never had much competition from far back uh, as they were able to open up on their, uh, on their rivals. It was about a length and a quarter back to the third place finisher. Sir Bear, who closed well from off the pace, he was uh, rallying hard nearing the stretch, made a nice finish towards the outside. 
but uh, not able to make a game, real game of it with a crafty friend and a firm success, knocking heads all the way around the racetrack. Just a very good effort by both of those horses. A firm success has yet to win a race this year, but certainly has, uh, has managed to compete very, very competitively in all of his starts so far. Crafty friend, a six-year-old chestnut horse, bred in Kentucky by Foxfield. He is the son of Crafty Prospector. He's owned by the Thoroughbred Corp. He is a uh, recent arrival in New York in the barn of trainer John Kimmel, ridden to victory by contract rider for the Thoroughbred Corporation, Gary Stevens, getting the win here in 1 minute 21 and 1 fifth seconds. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us. That does conclude our wrap-up of stakes action from the previous week. Had a lot of races to bring to you, so we're kind of trying to squeeze a lot of activity into a short period of time for you. Looks like this is about the end of the summer racing season, but I'm sure we'll have a lot of exciting racing to bring to you through the fall championship series at, uh, at Belmont Park, as well as from around the country. All of the exciting racing leading up to the Breeders' Cup, which is only about nine weeks away. It seems uh, hard to believe, but we're getting close. We're drawing in with, uh, within a couple of months now of the Breeders' Cup. We do hope you will join us for uh, all of those racing events, bringing, uh, bringing you right up to the Breeders' Cup, the highlight of the fall racing season. Next week here on Horses and Courses, we will be bringing you a number of grade one stakes racing, kicking off the weekend's, uh, the, the Belmont Fall Championship Series. Next weekend, we will have grade one racing in the Gazelle Handicap and the Man of War Handicap, as well as closing out the Delmar uh, racing season with the Delmar Futurity. That'll be run on Wednesday to close out their, uh, their summer meeting. We do hope to see all of you back next week for this and other, these and other stakes racing features. I'm Jean Wood. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see everyone back here next week.